I'm somebody that uses headphones exclusively for gaming because of the level of detail and sound quality that they offer. I definitely never expected to be able to get anything close to that level of performance out of a gaming oriented soundbar. But this thing, the Creative Sound Blaster Katana V2, it blew me away. The soundbar is all black and it has a really nice premium feeling build with a brushed aluminum top plate. There's an LED screen on the front panel and nice metal grills covering the drivers. There's loads of connection options and some shock absorbing rubber feet on the bottom. The package comes with everything you should need to be able to get set up and running on multiple different platforms. We've got the power adapter here. It's not too big and it should be fairly easy to hide with your setup. These are a pair of wall brackets in case you want to get the system completely off your desk and then mount it under a TV or a monitor, and it comes with its own screws as well. I don't know if it's just my review sample or if all retail units are like this, but mine came with three different power cables for all different types of wall sockets. This thin looking wire is an optical cable, and they included a nice remote control here, and that's going to be nice for anybody that wants to use this with their TV setup in a living room space. They didn't include any batteries though, so you're going to have to go out and get your own if you want to use the remote. The soundbar itself is a really nice size and shape actually, and even though it's designed for gamers, it doesn't have any of that crazy gamer spaceship styling if you know what I mean. It looks like a normal soundbar, and I like that because it means it should like easily blend in with your setup or in your living room or whatever you want to use it with. The idea here is that the soundbar is supposed to be able to fit under most monitors, but depending on the size and shape of the monitor stand, you might run into some issues forcing you to have to put the soundbar on top of the monitor stand or its legs or however it works. That's what happened to me because my monitor has this gigantic stand and the legs stick out really far and I just don't have enough space on my desk to put the soundbar in front of it. So I just stuck it on top and it worked out perfectly fine. Even with like loud sounds and vibrations, it didn't move around on me or anything like that. So that's a pretty big plus. But if you've got a monitor stand, that's like aftermarket like a boom arm or something like that then that's not even going to be an issue at all it should tuck right under there perfectly fine there's six buttons on top that give you basic control over the system they're nice quality and they feel firm and tactile you can use these to cycle through all the different input sources and also change the sound profile right on the device without having to open any software thanks to a ton of connections the katana v2 can work on multiple different devices and platforms Around back, we have connectors for the input power, subwoofer, optical in, auxiliary in, USB-C, Super x fi that enables a multi-speaker effect or virtual surround sound in headphones, and there's also a button for this effect up top on the soundbar. And they also threw in an HDMI ARC port, and that's going to be useful for anyone that wants to set this up with their TV. What that does is it basically allows you to use a single HDMI cable to carry picture and sound from a receiver to your TV, and then from the TV back to the soundbar. So it basically simplifies the setup and eliminates the need for any extra audio cables. And there's also Bluetooth 5.0 support as well, so you can get your mobile device synced up on there and just use it as a big Bluetooth speaker. And I almost forgot to mention, there's also a 3.5 millimeter audio jack right on the front panel in the LED screen and that lets you plug in a pair of headphones easily without having to reach around the back. The bottom of the soundbar is a continuous light strip with built-in RGB lighting with seven pre-programmed effects including the option to just set a static color if you don't like changing or moving lights and you can always just turn it off if you're not into lighting at all. I think it looks really good though. The lighting is diffused and it just adds this nice soft looking glow to your desktop space. The creative apps a free download and it lets you control the lighting and a whole lot more. Sound mode has a ton of presets that change the audio profile with a single click, and you can see here some of them are game or application specific. Super X5 is the multi-speaker or surround sound effect for headphones that I mentioned before. Crystal Voice gives you some options to change how your microphone sounds. Decoder is basically a dynamic range adjustment for your volume. It gives you control over the swings between loud and quiet sounds. Acoustic Engine lets you play around with some effects like surround sound, dialogue enhancer, and other stuff like that. Scout Mode's a gaming effect that helps enhance directional sounds. Mixer gives you control over the levels of the different inputs and outputs. There's an equalizer if you want to jump in and fine tune the audio manually. And finally, there's a tab here that lets you customize some of the buttons on the remote. So yeah, like I said, there's a ton of different features and effects to play around with inside this app. It really lets you fine tune and customize the audio experience to your preference. Delivering the sound, we have two 2.5 inch mid-range drivers, two 3.25 inch tweeters, and a 6.5 inch subwoofer for bass. Together, the entire system can deliver 126 watts of RMS power with a 252 watt peak. In other words, it's loud. I think it's louder than anyone would ever need or want to go, especially for a device that's kind of designed to sit right in front of you on your desk. You're really close to it, so you never need to crank it up like that. Unless you're in a big living room space and you're using it with your TV, then you might want to really push it up. But still, like 
for such a small device, the sound output is just completely insane. It's so loud that it's the type of thing that could get you in trouble with your neighbors if you live in an apartment. Like if you really crank this thing up, people are gonna hear it. The amazing part's that the sound seems to stay detailed even when you crank up the loudness. It doesn't seem to become distorted or lose any fine details or anything like that. And that's impressive. It's designed for gaming first. And I'll tell you, it does its job well. Usually headphones are the way to go for games where subtle details matter, like shooters. But the Katana V2 is able to deliver a good portion of that acoustic range without having to clamp onto your head. And that power and punchiness that this thing can deliver, it's just awesome. It has me wanting to crank up the volume all the time. It just sounds so epic and immerses you into the game. And having a headphone jack right on the front of the soundbar makes it really easy to switch between speakers and headphones if you're going to start gaming at night and you don't want to wake up your whole neighborhood. It's really easy to just plug into the front of the this thing rather than having to reach around the back of your PC. It's just a lot more convenient, and I think that's a good design decision right there. And it's not just good for gaming. The way the sound comes out of this thing, it just kind of fills my studio space. I love listening to it for music, or even if I'm playing a video or a movie or something like that, it just sounds good all the way around. And it just gives you that freedom to disconnect from your headphones. Even if they're wireless, you still got something on your head all the time. To be able to ditch that and still have really good sounding, punchy audio, it's just awesome. Now, one thing the Katana V2 is not really good at is being a microphone. Creative included a built-in mic. You're listening to it right now, and it isn't great. <laughs> Let's be honest. A soundbar is not the best place for a built-in microphone. You've got speakers pushing audio out, and then the microphone in the same spot trying to take audio as an input. You're gonna get reverberation, feedback, and maybe some echoing. The only reason you don't hear that right now is because I have the soundbar muted. You don't have any sound coming out to distort the microphone or anything. But still, the quality is just not great. You really need to use it in a pinch. I mean, it's there as an option, but I wouldn't go after this soundbar for the microphone quality, that's for sure. So is it worth its asking price? Well, for me, that's an easy yes. I like everything about the Katana V2, except for the microphone quality, but that doesn't really matter because I'm never going to use it anyway. I'm not buying a sound system for the built-in mic. This thing delivers where it matters. The build quality, the lighting, the customization options, and the insanely loud, high-quality sound make this a really easy product to recommend. Purchasing links, specs, details, features, all that good stuff, it's down in the description for you. Check it out if you're interested. And tell me in the comments what you think about gaming with a soundbar. I'm really curious what gamers think about this. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up on your way out and we'll see you.